this particular chassis here is getting a, a big triple in it also but uh this is a single cylinder banshee motor. what it's a single cylinder banshee motor so it's a whole custom billet banshee case banshee transmission everything but it's has a single cylinder on it really so it's a 450 cc uh single cylinder they call it a cougar cougar cylinder but it's to compete with hondas no kidding yeah so well it, that that case is huge well it's a banshee case so come around this side this side so it holds the same dimensions as a regular banshee transmission but they had to cut this portion out and put the flywheel because the crank is so much smaller but it still fits in a banshee uh location uh motor mount really yeah so it's a 450 cc so it'll compete with like a, a puma 250r um but you get so much so it's a little bit heavier than a 250r motor but you have so much more capability compared to a 250r motor is because with a 250r motor you run out of gearing options with big horsepower and this uh since it has a banshee transmission gearing options and uh primary gear options are endless so you can never run out of gearing options like you know that last puma that i built we put a, a 18 tooth front sprocket on it and a 35 rear and it still pulls it to and it's, it's out of gears you know we've been in this stuff for a while and it never gets old no. you know I, I mean i'm out of it i don't have quads it now it just doesn't I mean, but people think that it's changed a lot. It really hasn't changed. No, a lot. but they just become faster, lighter. They haven't really became a lot much faster though. It's, Look at this beast. That's a little weird. This is a triple. Well, that's a four mil, but that's a stock case triple. See, like Big Rick is a, a billet case triple. This is actually an OEM case that a guy built out of two Banshee cases. And he did a fabulous job. Like if you look at the back of this, it's just beautiful craftsmanship. And um, so it's only a little four mil. This is only 633 cc's. So it's actually a really small motor. So you got to leave this frame bare. You're not painting yeah, it. Yeah, no, this no, is all. Getting... That'll last like that for the rest of its life and never but corrode. Those rust. welds, man, these guys, beautiful work. Beautiful work. And see, uh, we're also trying, these are these are some of my new bikes. So like Big Rick was the first one I tried and then this one, and then we just did this one. So this is a new uh, graphics anodizing that they're doing. Really? Yeah, so it's a two-step process and it's all done, it's all anodized. That's No not kidding. Anodized. Yeah. So they actually make the whole part blue first and then they like do a masking process and then they go ahead and acid it and put the black on over. And we just did this purple and green. Uh, this is new. It's a purple and green. Man, I've, I've been gone for a little bit, and look at this. <laughs> Last time I was here, there was only one. That is freaking awesome. And this uh, surgical grade titanium. Yeah, grade nine. Grade nine. So, say a bike like this weighs what? Uh, uh, this bike here, when it's all done, this bike here will weigh right around two, 219, 221. And this is the two-cylinder one. Mm -hmm. We're showing the big one for last. That big one's a beast. These things are awesome. You want to talk about ripping your sockets from your shoulders, these suckers hook up. How many frames do you have, dude? So this is the monster, big rig. This thing is ridiculous. Almost 300 horsepower, you said? Yeah, probably around 280. 280. And it's gonna be what, around 300 pounds? No, that this thing should weigh right around 265. 265. <laughs> so, so you got more horsepower than you have weight. Pretty much. Wow. And then if you throw a light guy on it. Yeah, and it's uh, this motor here is around 1,085 cc, so it's a little under 1,100. So it's an 80 millimeter bore with a 72 millimeter stroke. And it's going to run ethanol? Yeah, methanol. Yeah. 
is freaking awesome. So yeah, the carburetors on this thing are uh, three dual feed electrons. So they have dual feed bowls because you know methanol burns quite a bit faster than gas. Yeah. So it has dual feed bowls. So it has two inlets going into the bowl, and these are um, 48 millimeters uh, carburetors. So three 48s with dual power jets. This thing's a beast. So we originally put the gas tank in the front, but then uh, I decided to actually put a gas tank over the top because we figured by time we start pumping, because it has three diaphragm fuel pumps, so by time we start pumping the fuel to the system, you get all three pumps wet and fill all three bowls, the tank will be like less than half full already. So we'd have to top it off as soon as the system was filled up. Yeah, basically you have enough fuel to make a run and Maybe that's it. Maybe one run. So we're going to go ahead and put a tank on the top after I mount the fuel pumps on. The tank's going to sit up here. So you're not going to have the one in the front? No, it'll be there, but we'll actually just use it for a secondary. It's like or, a backup. Or we'll ever need, you know, it's basically for kind of like a ballast too. Put a little weight in the front. Yeah. Oh, it's going to, this thing's a beast. Man, this thing, this thing will rip your arms off your shoulders. It takes a special person to ride that. Wow. I can only imagine. To ride this bike to its full potential, it takes a bunch of person. <laughs> yeah, I could only imagine. There's a cylinder. What size is this guy? So this is a, this is a 350 class bike. So this is kind of where the motor starts. Man, just and that's every, a stock cylinder. Everything is just so cool. But this is what I call an ultralight setup. So this frame here, this whole bike here, when it's all done, this bike here will weigh less than 200 pounds. I can see that. Look at the size of the... Yeah, it's the, a 5 8 3 quarter. So the upper rails are, are 5 8 and the bottom rails are 3 quarter. Um, a lot of flex in this frame, but the motor's a lot less horsepower. But this is actually a really fast bike. It's a very competitive bike for the size. What's going to go in the blue one? Uh, the blue one is a customer, and it's going to be getting a, a pretty large motor. It's a twin cylinder. 775 cc so it's a 21 mil stroke and it's a, it's a large twin it's running big paddles back here yeah we put a set of ars on the back uh, this is a this is a pretty much a a casting three cylinder kind of like what that cylinder is over there a raw one this stuff never gets old wow this would be a ride. Gee, I could only imagine when the power band comes on, this thing's... There's, there's some jewelry right here. This One of these probably cost you as much as your uh, crate uh, passenger car engine. Yeah, the, uh, the, <laughs> the polish motor. You get the polish <laughs> motor is like basically... Uh, damn near a brand new uh, LS twin turbo. <laughs> twin turbo LS. Yeah, pretty close. Well, that's pretty but close. I don't know the numbers on it, but I'm I'm going to assume these three engines right here, you can probably buy a decent car brand new for what they cost. <laughs> and and not, not the strip model. Um, this guy? Huh. You could probably buy a couple of cars brand new. <laughs> This, <laughs> and I don't want to show everything he's got because he's got. He's uh, last time we were here, we played around with these mopeds that he has, and they're they're almost unrideable. <laughs> Is this something new, or did you have this last time? This, oh, this, okay. this little thing here. The oh, cylinder go oh, this thing will <laughs> freaking kill you. You you don't even know. Uh, you think you're hopping on a little toy? Oh my god. This, you can almost not even ride it. It's that fast. This thing's got power band. Yeah, as soon as you're, you, you think you're on the throttle, you're not even in the power yet. Yeah, I remember riding one of these and it was a single cylinder. Is that the engine that was on the RC car? Yeah. I could oh, that's that that was on the yeah. RC. That, so this is that pretty BMW. Much, yeah, this is pretty much all done. I just I'm waiting for the guy to build me some pipes for it. But it's definitely gonna uh, be a 
ridiculous. You can't even ride these things. That will be probably unreliable. You can't. That, that they're so violent when the power comes on that it, you're either going to go sideways and fall, or it's coming over before you can stop it. Yeah, they. <laughs> yep. The only difference, we get older, we just get more toys. Hmm. No, they just get more expensive. Well, this is a pretty nice Banshee. Wow, look at these A-arms. Yeah, so a guy built this. He was actually the first guy to take a Yamaha Banshee across the Baja in 87. And he built this chassis. It's called a Dean Sundahl frame. And um, it's basically built like a mini trophy truck. That, with cross yeah. Over suspension. Yeah. So wow. it, it's a... It's kind of a builder's project, so we've done quite a bit of changes to it and like got it up to speed, but it's pretty close. We're actually pretty close. <laughs> These Elka shocks are they're awesome. So, so we have, yeah, all new brakes and. Well, I can see. Look at the triangulation, the bracing back here. Oh yeah. So this this gives you a tremendous amount of strength right here. Yeah, it's built like you know how you know how the Baja trucks have crossover. Yeah. Wow, and that, those Elkas, this, yeah, this thing would soak up the rough stuff for sure. But it takes yeah, stock look the, plastics. Look, look at the front end. Oh, this look thing's at the front end view. This of thing's this. sick. Wow. So we had to make some modifications to the swing arm that he provided. So uh, Lone Star's working on the swing arm, and then I pretty much have everything else: the new axle, all the billet hubs, uh, everything. It's it's pretty much done. I got the new OEM plastics. We got these from Puerto Rico. Uh, because the, the port, plastic yeah because they still make these oh we see they only really built, they only made the oh they only made the banshee in the usa till 2006 but they kept making them in puerto rico really so this is actually considered a um this one here i think is a 07 model this color but they kept making them like to 2010 2011 I think past 2000, and, yeah, I think 2010 was last year. But, so the Puerto Ricans are still able to get these factory fenders and these decals because realistically these were never even, uh, this color scheme was never, and these right. were never in we're, America. So No, we never saw it. So you can't go to the Yamaha dealership and say, hey, I want plastics and a sticker kit for 07 Banshee because they don't even know what it is. I like that. That's pretty cool. Stroke twin, but yeah, well, if you want to know about bikes, Tim's the guy. He's he's not just a talker; he's a doer. He builds all these. So this one, we changed a couple things on it because it was never made to have full fenders, so it needed fender supports and stuff. So um, I see that. He made some fender supports because I really wanted this to like to be an ultimate dune kind of bike. So um, I wanted full fenders on it. So that's what. That looks good. That's a nice. Some, I like that. Make some changes. 